Hi, we're here live with uh, Marcus Sheridan as our guest, and uh, he's the sales line at uh, thesalesline.com, and he's actually an overall really cool guy. Welcome, uh, Marcus, and thanks for being here. Eric, thank you for having me. I'm excited, and uh, I hope we have a good conversation and say something that that gives somebody some value, man. Yeah, uh, we were talking about uh, do it, doing uh, the podcast in Danish, but um, we opted for English. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think you need to uh, tell um, the listeners uh, a bit about uh, yourself uh, before we uh, go into uh, content marketing. Uh, yeah, first things first is I've been to Denmark and I was there recently and I'm coming back again and I love Copenhagen. It was awesome and uh, it was one of the highlights of my, my... It was the first time I've ever been to Europe, so that was cool. But my quick story is I was... Uh, I started a swimming pool company in uh, 2001 uh, where we install in-ground swimming pools um, throughout uh, the states of Virginia and Maryland. And uh, we almost lost this business in 2009 because of the economy, because of the market crash here in the U.S. Nobody could get loans for pools. It was really bad. And, and I was this close to, to filing bankruptcy and saying no more. And during this time period of great stress, I was reading about the internet and internet marketing and content marketing, and social media marketing, all these fancy words. And what I kept hearing, Eric, was, look, if somebody has a question, you need to address it, and you need to address it on your website. And so that became our philosophy, a simple philosophy that changed my life, which is they ask, you answer. And that is if anybody has a question, in our case at the time it was about swimming pools. Now today I'm just a silent partner with this swimming pool company. I have a marketing agency. But, but then it was about pools. And so I said if anybody has a question about pools, good, bad, or ugly, I'm going to address it on my website honestly and transparently. And I'm going to do it more than anybody else. And I'm going to become the Wikipedia of our industry, the go-to source. Make a long story short. We, we started this, it picked up a ton of traction, way more traffic, way more leads, way more sales, saved the business, and today it's the most trafficked swimming pool website in the world. We get about 350,000 visitors a month, and it's given me this amazing opportunity to, um, to have this other company and to tell an amazing story that keeps getting told over and over around the world. It's been a lot of fun, man. Yeah, and this is exactly there where you talked about this at uh, ContentCon 14 here in Copenhagen, uh, where I met you, and uh, I was really impressed with your uh, presentation. You were on last uh, at four o'clock, I think, and people were like, "Oh God, we need one more hour, and we can go home to our whatever you do when you're home." And then you come in and uh, really energize uh, the people uh, there. And um, even though that we as Danish people, we're often quite, a bit quiet and we don't want to do crazy stuff, you um, you got us to uh, really energize <laughs> and do some crazy stuff. You know what, man? The, uh, the organizer there, um, Jesper, he came to me, man. He was like, so we're, you know, as the Danish people were a little more reserved. He said, so I'm not sure how everybody's going to take you here. And uh, I said, man, don't you worry. By the time they get through the first 10 or 15 minutes, they're going to be like, all right, this this pool guy from America, he's he's not so bad, right? And so it really was it really was a great, great time. I loved it. And uh, the Danish people, we had, you know, and it was only fitting that Red Bull was the sponsor of that event. I mean, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was only fitting. And uh, so it was a good time, Eric. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, and um, we we spoke there uh, just a few minutes and uh, emailed back and forth and now you're here on the on the podcast so uh, thanks for that and it's, uh, it's a really great opportunity actually the first podcast I I'm doing in English so um, anybody not from Denmark uh, the, the the really weird accent is uh, is Danish um, but um, normally we start with um, with a with an example of um, you as a guest here, um, some something where you helped, or uh, you helped somebody, or somebody helped you, and you both got uh, success out of that. Well, yeah, and I, by the way, I love uh, the name of your podcast, Help Marketing. By the way, how do you say that in Danish? Uh, help Marketing, actually, it's in, uh, but if you translate it, it's Hjelbe uh, Marketing, Hjelbe Marketing. All right, that's cool. I like how that sounds, man. So, <laughs> so um, you know, there's been multiple examples of um, of of what you're talking about, but I'm going to actually use 
I'm going to use a uh, simple example that I have experienced uh, in the um, in the uh, speaking space. Okay, and so I have had um, fellow speakers write articles about other speakers that they thought were incredibly effective and strong in certain areas. Okay. And what that has led me to is that has helped me to, uh, that helped my awareness, but it also built my relationship with that particular person. And oftentimes, I will refer that person now when it comes to somebody that approaches me and they need a specialist in that area. And this happens all the time. The, the greatest digital marketers, Eric, are the ones that literally don't see the world as competition. They just don't see it. And they view it as, all right, we're all striving for this for the same goal. And I, as a, I one time wrote an article that just shocked people in the swimming pool space. I, um, uh, one of the cities that we work in is Richmond, Virginia. And I wrote an article about the best swimming pool contractors in Richmond, Virginia. And I literally came up with five contractors, builders, that I thought were some of the best. And I didn't put myself on that list. And people were like, dude, what is wrong with you? How could you not put yourself on that list? I'm like, what you don't understand is now when people are searching these things, they're coming to my site. When somebody's looking for best pool builders in Richmond, Virginia, they're coming to my place, right? I don't have to sit there and tell them I'm awesome. They can figure it out for themselves. They're either going to like what they see or they're not. And because we are the most open and transparent swimming pool company in the world in terms of information, that's what saved the business, right? And I have that mentality when it comes to the marketing company that I now own, that agency. It's the exact same thing, Eric. And the companies that get this principle, man, and are not so afraid of the competition, but just openly address these types of subjects, they are doing incredible things online. So it sounds like the people who normal, normally would be your uh, competitors, they, um, uh, they said, well, Marcus is a guy that you uh, should uh, hire. Uh, and then you refer back to them now or at the opposite. So it, it's actually helping your competition will help yourself as well. That's ex that's exactly right. You know, you can see yourselves as competition or you can say, yeah, we're on the same team. And I, and I tend to just say I'm on the same team as these people. I mean, look at it like this. I am, I am helping you and you are helping me right now. We're competing for the same market, which is people that are content marketers that listen to podcasts. Hmm. So one might sit there and say if they have this scarce mentality, I ain't going to be on Eric's podcast because I'm helping him build his audience. Well, that's, of course, the stupidest thing I've ever heard because this is a very mutually beneficial relationship that we have for this half hour that we're on here. I can bring some value. You can introduce me to some folks that I haven't met before and... It's a perfect combination. That's the essence of what content should be all about today. Yeah. No, I uh, very much agree with you. Um, but now we need to actually to go into the, 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 the heart of this. And I am going to play this person that really is not convinced that content marketing is the way to go. The devil's advocate of content marketing. Sweet. I hate content marketing. That's, nice. that's from the next 15 minutes. That's what I'm going to say. So I've found a lot of arguments against content marketing. And, and, and before you go on with this, yeah. Eric, before you go sure. on, let me say, this, what you're getting ready to do, is the biggest problem in the marketing space right now. Because the number one email that I get over the last four years is, Marcus, I'm frustrated because I believe in inbound marketing. I believe in content marketing. I know there's a better way, but sales department doesn't see it. Management doesn't see it, and I'm so frustrated. I want to quit. I hear that all the time. I hear it every single week, Eric. And that's why doing this type of activity. And I have no idea what you're going to say, but I can tell you this: I've been super successful helping companies get buy-in for this subject called content marketing all over the world, all over the world. 
Perfect. So you're the perfect guy to um, to argue with now. So I'll um, start off with an easy one. We're bo we're boring business to business company. We love this. Uh, I listened to your podcast <laughs> as well, and you said business to business the other the other day, not human to human. Uh, so we're a boring business to business company, and we can't produce anything, any content that's interesting. That doesn't work for us. You know, people have actually asked me before, um, Marcus. How did you do this with swimming pools? Swimming pools aren't sexy. And I'm like, what you talking about, man? Swimming pools are super sexy. If you're getting ready to spend fifty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars on a swimming pool, you don't want to make any mistakes. You want to know what you're getting. That's really sexy at the time. Look, here's the reality, Eric. The reality is this: whenever money is involved, throw boring out the window. It doesn't. It because because the moment we reach to our wallets and a business reaches to their wallet, they do not want to make a mistake with their money. And what is going to help them not make a mistake? It's education. That education can only from come from great content, great great sales efforts, which is combined with content. And so. The idea that B2B is not human to human, H to H, or P to P, people to people is ridiculous. Those people on that end, they have questions too. They want to know the answers to those questions. They're looking for somebody to resolve their concerns, their worries, their issues. And that's why content marketing works in the B2B space. Okay, so let's say that you win this one. Uh, but we don't have time for it. We don't have time to produce all of this content. Nah, we don't have time. Do you know what people are really saying when they say they don't have the time? Because I've heard that before, Eric, and this is what they're saying to you. Uh, Eric, that thing you just explained to me, it's just not important to me. Because here's the thing, man. The magical thing about us human beings is we tend to find the time to do that which we value, and if we don't value it, we do not find the time, but yet we blame time. Let me give an example. Today, I got up at 5.30 a.m. in the morning and went fishing on the, on the river for three hours. I didn't have the time, but I did it. I made the time because I value that thing called fishing. So... If somebody says they don't have the time, what they're saying is you haven't explained it well. So if you're, if you're uh, like, say, a, a chief marketing officer for an organization, you present management with the idea of content or inbound marketing, and they say no, basically what they just told you wasn't anything to do with time. They just said you haven't explained it well, and you need to get back to the drawing board. You need to help them catch the vision. So it's simply me that's not good enough to convince my boss or the agency It's not good enough to convince the client. Your, your communication is flawed. Now, it could be that the person listening is just closed-minded and they're not a forward thinker and there's no hope for them anyway. And at that point, I can't help you. But more often than not, Eric, it's because marketers are using the wrong language. Like content marketing is not a very good way to say it. I mean, really, what we're talking about here is communicating, listening, teaching, and helping. We give it fancy words, but that's really what it's all about. And that's the way, you know, if you go to, a, if you go to the CEO of a company, Eric, and you say, is content marketing important, they're probably going to say, I don't know, probably not. No, I don't see it being important. But if you go to a CEO and you say, do you think great listening and communication when it comes to our prospects and customers is important, what CEO is going to say, no, that's not important? They're going to say, yeah, that's very important. Of course it's important. If you say to a CEO, is helping solve people's problems when it comes to our products, our services, is that important? CEO every time is going to say, absolutely, that's important. But if you say, do you think writing blog articles is important? CEO now all of a sudden says, that sounds stupid. Do you see the difference? Words matter. Words matter, and the way that we explain things matter. But we also need to uh, think about, we've always done content marketing. We always did content. We've always done it. So there's no reason to do anything else that, that we're doing right now. We've always done content marketing. So, so why should we change? Yeah, so actually, 
here's the deal. Content marketing has been around since the beginning of time. And the entire Bible itself could be considered content marketing. It's a series of principles that are taught answering questions about life, using a lot of story to make a point. Well, do you think our company right now, when you go to our website, anybody would ever mistake that for the Bible? I don't think they would, because the fact is that most organizations are not using content marketing. What they're doing is they're using billboard marketing, brochure marketing, look at us, we're awesome marketing, and they're not saying, okay, what are your questions? I'm going to address every single one of them. The hard ones, too, I'll address those as well. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm going to look at it from both sides. That's content marketing, and most companies ain't doing that. But, yeah, it's been around forever. And when it's done right, it's built to last. Yeah, definitely. Um Sorry, I just took off my hat. I agree with you. Now I'm putting up back on my uh, <laughs> argument. Yeah, <laughs> right. You gotta continue to be the devil's advocate here, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so th the problem is here that nobody comes to our uh, website. What you just say? You said uh, 350,000 people uh, on your uh, website every month. We have like five, ten people, yeah, and that's we have what's nobody called... on our news list uh, either. Nobody is going to our Facebook page. LinkedIn, we, we well, we have it, but there's nobody there. There's nobody following us, so what, there's nothing, there's no uh, value to, to give there right now. So there's a couple of points to that. Usually what's happening there, that's called a self-fulfilling prophecy. And if I was, if, if you really were a business owner and you said that to me, Eric, I would say to you this very simple question. Okay, Eric, how much of your website talks about you and what percentage talks about me? <laughs> and just like if you look at the home page of this is always funny to me like I ask people all the time so what is more when you go to a home page of a website are you more interested in your problems or are you more interested in the company and of course the answer is well I'm more interested in my problems but notwithstanding what do 99 percent of all home pages talk about. They don't talk about your problems. They talk about the company. Me, they me, talk me. about why they're so cool, why they're awesome, what they do, who they are, all these things. No, 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 no. No. That's not what it's about. That's not what it's about. And so if it's about you, I'm not going to be interested. If it's about me, it's about my problems, about my questions, about my concerns. You know, search engines, first of all, are going to love you if you're a great teacher. Searchers are going to love you if you're a great teacher and then you're going to start to generate traffic leads and sales also sometimes people say to me well Marcus our website leads are bad well news flash folks your web leads are as good or as bad as the content that brought them there and if your messaging stinks your leads will stink too if your messaging is good if it's clean, if it allows somebody to push themselves down the funnel or out of the funnel because it's so clear and honest, now you're going to start to generate great leads. I get amazing leads from my website, but that's because I talk honestly. I don't get a bunch of, as they say here in the States, tire kickers, people that are not just truly interested in buying something. Yeah, but that sounds like a lot of work. And... If I don't only have my 5 or 25 or 30 people on the website today and I need to create all of the content that's SEO optimized and uh, I need to convert them to my newsletter and all of that stuff, that sounds, uh, it sounds interesting and promising, but I have quarterly uh, budgets to fulfill. So how can I change from going uh, doing the, the short-term sales to it sounds like you're talking about long-term sales? Well, I mean, look, if... Everything comes down, a sales cycle comes down to trust. And the reason why sales cycles take long, other than approvals, is because of trust. And if they haven't said yes to you yes, it's because they don't trust you yet. The quickest way that you can decrease your existing sales cycle is to use content because it's the greatest trust generator. And you say, well, I mean, 
you know, this is going to take a while. Well, six, from, six months from now, where are you going to be anyway? You're either going to be in the same boat, struggling with the way things are happening so fast, the way things are changing, the digital consumer, or you're going to have start, started to adjust. You're going to start to be like them. And you're going to start to get a lot of results in six months in most cases. I know that to be true. Six months is oftentimes the magical number for a lot of people. And so, you know, this is the only, this is, what we're talking about here, this is going to be relevant as much in 20 years as it is right now. The need for you to listen, communicate, help, and teach, and to do it at a high level, that will never go away. So, you know, Facebook, Twitter, that might go away, but this isn't going away. I love this uh, Chinese um, uh, saying that uh, when is the best time to plant a tree? And then the answer is a hundred years ago, because then you can uh, get the fruits and the, and the lim timber of the tree right now. Instead of doing it now, then you have to wait a hundred years. That's exactly right. You know, um, there's a law. It's called the law of the harvest, and every farmer has to be able to embrace that law. Otherwise. They never have crops. They've got to be willing to plant the seed. They've got to be wor willing to, to till the ground. They've got to be willing to nourish the seed, to tend to the crop, and eventually there's a harvest. And it amazes me, Eric, that people want to throw away good money at bad things, right? Things that we know don't work, that have not been working for at least five or ten years, but they're still throwing away money at it. And it's, you know, it's like you do a radio advertisement. It's gone in 30 seconds and it's never coming back. It will not have a chance to help you again. But if you write an article, that article could help you from now until the end of time. That is the essence of great content marketing. And you know, one other thing about this, Eric, people say, I don't have the time and, you know, I just don't know if we can pull this off. Think about this for a second. Most organizations have salespeople. Most of those salespeople are sending out emails to prospects and customers every day. My question is, how many of those emails that they're sending out are addressing uh, prospects or customers' questions, worries, issues, concerns? In other words, what's amazing, Eric, is that most companies are writing literally dozens of blog articles a day. They just don't realize they're doing it. They're doing it through email. What if Every time one of those emails was sent, somebody in marketing was BCC'd, that they received the email, and now they're hearing the questions that prospects are asking. They're seeing the answers salespeople are giving. They can turn those answers into an article on the website. Now you've got a prolific amount of content, and you're not doing a lot of extra work for it. You're just using the existing staff that you already have, the existing workload that they're already doing. That's a great piece of, uh, piece of advice. But let's say that we have some uh, salespeople who are uh, they're not convinced yet, and they they're saying we need to push more more commercials, more radio commercials. We want to be on TV. We want to do banner ads. We want to do all of that stuff that really gets us a lot of leads, so we can go sell. We we can't wait six months. I would just ask those people. You tell me when was the last time you bought something because of a because of a TV ad? When was the last time you bought something because of a radio advertisement? And when was the last time you researched something on Google? Because I know they researched something on Google yesterday. But the last time they bought something on the radio because of a radio ad? Like five years ago, maybe? I mean, the fact is, if you want to get by an Eric, you have to allow people to see how they themselves are using the internet how they are shopping, how they are researching, how they are making buying decisions. They have to see that. The moment somebody accepts the way they are behaving online, then they're going to be like, okay, yeah, this is crazy. We better be doing this. But if they don't recognize, if they don't look into the mirror, it doesn't work, man. Are you getting tired of me yet? No. <laughs> um, so let's say that uh, we were... The next one is, uh, is one who is uh, convinced. But the problem is that um, they're not sure what kind of content they should um, they should make. Of course, the, the BBC, uh, BBC, BCC example that you just had uh, was a good piece of advice, but how can we otherwise find some good uh, content? I just think, look, man, I have, um, I have brainstormed with companies the questions they get asked all the time. 
and we've never come up with less than 30, excuse me, we've never come up with less than 100 questions in 30 minutes before. Think about that, man. And so if you write two or three articles a week, say you write two articles a week, that's 50, 50 weeks. So 100 articles could be a year's worth of content. And people are saying, I don't know what to write about. Stop overanalyzing it. Stop it. Somebody asked you the question, it means another 1,000 people have searched it online. That means you need to be the one that's in charge of that conversation. You need to be talking about it. You cannot be ignoring it. You cannot be the ostrich with your head in the sand just saying, oh, the problem will go away. The problem never goes away. The question never goes away. The concern never goes away until you resolve it, period. So the final question, and it's not really an argument uh, question. It's more uh, of an organizational uh, question or uh, um, if the organization isn't set up for content marketing right, could you elaborate a bit about how, uh, how a good organizational setup could be? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a couple things about the setup, but ultimately a couple things need to happen. Number one, you need to teach everybody on staff the what, the how, the why of content marketing. In other words, they need to see what it is, how it can be done effectively, and how easy it is to do with the they ask you answer, and why it's important to them. In other words, how is it going to impact the company, but individually, how is it going to impact each person? So that's the first major thing. The second major thing, Eric, is there needs to be some type of content manager, some, some main source where everybody sends the content or the person that's interviewing employees, where that email, that BCC email goes to that I was referring to earlier, the cheerleader, the catalyst, the organizer. There needs to be one person, and that's why journalists, uh, people, people with a journalistic background, are great at this job. I mean, they're just perfect for it because they can they can write, they can edit, they can interview, they can usually cut video. I mean, there's every reason in the world why you know every decent, every small business that's got ten or more employees, in my opinion, should have somebody with journalistic skills on staff to tell the story, to 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 get the content out of the employees, and. Uh, you know, that person, whatever you pay them, it's going to be returned tenfold, man. I mean, it's going to be way more because of the business they're going to generate for years to come. Cool. So uh, before we get to uh, some of the really concrete advice that um, that you have for uh, for listeners here, I just want to take uh, a second to talk about uh, the Patreon experiment that we have here on, uh, on Help Marketing. Um, and it's actually stolen from... Um, uh, Tom Merritt and his uh, Daily Tech News show podcast. He's really, really good, so uh, go listen to him as well. Uh, but the point is, if you get any well value of uh, out of the, the podcast here by listening to uh, to Marcus and other uh, people who are guests here, um, and you want to give some uh, value back, patreon.com um, slash Eric Sings, my name in one word, and there you can uh, decide uh, if and how much you want to give uh, per episode. You can give 25 cents, 50 cents, a dollar, 10 dollars, or one cent. It's entirely up to you. Um, just have a look at it. How much is this uh, podcast? Um, how much value does it give you? And then you can give as much back as, uh, as you want. And we have a few um, uh, things that hopefully can convince you. It's, uh, for instance, uh, you can get your um, your name on the the, the text at, uh, at the end of this uh, the video version, and we'll do some webinars um, for all the patrons at some point. Uh, to uh, where we can all help each other. Um, so have a look at uh, patreon.com um, slash Eric Sings and um, see if that's something for you. So Marcus, um, a bit more about getting buy-in for your content marketing. That's what you uh, do in your uh, agency and we talked about a lot of the concrete um, arguments against content marketing but but very concretely, what, what would you advise uh, the, the people listening today? Well, yeah, I mean, we've been hitting it this whole time, but ultimately what it comes down to is you got to change the way that you talk about content marketing if you want to get buy-in. You have to help everybody understand what it is that it's listening, communicating, teaching, and helping, that these are principles that are eternal, that we happen to do them online today more than ever, that... People are, we are, as consumers, we've made a dramatic shift in the way that we buy. And I don't care what the business is, it's becoming a digital business. 
and I don't care what it is that you sell. Eventually, one of these days, it's probably going to be sold online without a handshake. That's powerful, but it's true. That's where we're headed, and so we can't fight it. We can't. It's just what it is. You know, we can't say, I'm a fax machine. I'm always going to be a fax machine, and faxes are always going to be important. This is not how it is, right? You, Kodak tried that, and it didn't work out for Kodak. And we see this again and again with different types of companies. We've got to look ahead. We've got to look forward. And we've got to say, what would we want if somebody was visiting, if I was visiting our website right now, what would I want to see? What are the questions I would want to be answered, assuming I didn't know anything about this product or this service? right? And then we've got to leverage the staff that we have. There's so much intellectual property on staff, on teams, with your existing employees, you got to take advantage of them. You got to take advantage of them. And you can't see this as a, I'm just going to kind of dip my toes in this in the water. I'm going to try it out. I'm just going to give content marketing a whirl. Just, you know, just get a feel for it. No. I mean, it's just, why? You know this is relevant. You know that teaching's critical. So do it. Do it the right way. Do it the right way. It's worth it. And when people do it right, the returns are amazing. I mean, absolutely astounding, man, astounding. But time is of the essence because eventually people are going to realize, oh, yeah, yeah, of course, that's how I want to be treated online. So, yeah, we better do that too. And you don't want to be late to the party. Like, you want to be first to this party. You do not want to be late. And there's still time to be on the first side of the party. Cool. Very, very, very good to talk to you uh, today, uh, Market Marcus. Um, it was just really fun to uh, to talk a bit about uh, arguments for and against. Um, so, and I'm very, very, very sure that the people listening uh, they want to hear more uh, from you. So, or follow you on social media. So, could talk uh, your podcast. What, um, what's the, the Mad Marketing podcast? Uh, Mad Marketing, man. Yeah. You can find Mad Marketing on iTunes, on Stitcher, on SoundCloud, and let me tell you, it's a different type of podcast, and it's cut from a different cloth, as we say. And I think you would enjoy it. But you can find me on Twitter at the Sales Lion. You can find me in Copenhagen in like two months exactly. In two months from this day, I'm going to be heading my little tail across the ocean um, to Denmark again. I'll have my wife with me this time, and I'll get to show her the the wonderful cobblestone streets of, of Copenhagen, which I'm really excited about. We're going to be having a workshop there that is a full day, man. And it's going to be if somebody has wanted to get all the meat and potatoes on getting buy-in and on strategy, boom, it's going to be right there. And those that attend and apply are going to be crushing it. I'm telling you, they're going to be crushing it, and they're going to be leaders. Um, they're going to be clear leaders in the in the digital space in Denmark. And that's on February 4th in, yeah. uh, here in Copenhagen. And uh, go to marcusfering.dk uh, to, uh, to sign up for it. Thanks for, so much for uh, for being here, Marcus. Today it's uh, it's been a blast, and uh, I'm a big fan of yours and of your podcasts. Um, so um, it's been an honor. My pleasure, brother. Thank you so much, Eric. Cool. So um, now we only need 10 seconds with uh, energy and uh, just talking a bit about uh, or just introduce the podcast uh, that you're here on Help Marketing with me and. Um, well, you decide how you want to say it, and if you don't do it uh, the, the right way the first time, you will get a second or a third time. <laughs> or a tenth try. <laughs> Definitely. All right, here we go. Hello, I am Marcus Sheridan from The Sales Lion, and I am so excited to be on Help Marketing today with my good friend Eric. Um, if you want to say something about um, that, that we're talking about buy-in on content marketing, oh, okay. that would be cool too. Can I just go into that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll put it together. And today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, about how to get content marketing buy-in. 
Eric has prepared some tough questions for me, and uh, I'm excited to answer those tough questions by giving some tough answers because we want to help folks like you to get the buy-in for content marketing that you haven't gotten yet. And just by doing a, a few simple things, it can make all the difference. I hope you enjoy this episode.